Hello everyone and welcome back. Decided to put a round bale out there. That's not how we're going to normally do it. Normally we're going to peel it off outside and bring it in there. But for right now, just she was mooing a lot and everything is brand new. I wanted it set up like they have it where they came from. There's always hay there. There's always grass. And then they get grain at milking. So I put that in there this morning after I cleaned the plugs on the tractor and put some gas in it. And they seem pretty calm. And we milked her again this morning and she didn't give much, only about a half a gallon. But the lady said it will take her a few days before she really starts letting her milk down. Already when I posted pictures on Facebook, people were asking, how come she looks so skinny? Remember, this is a dairy cow. That's a pretty healthy looking dairy cow. And she'll actually, she's pregnant, but when we dry her off, she'll gain some weight. And that will be uh, right about December 5th or 6th, right in that first week of December. Her name is Mesa. And the one-year-old steer right there, his name is Festus. He hasn't been handled, so he's wilder than Mesa's real, real tame. And Melissa doesn't want him to become friendly because she said she wouldn't be able to eat her friends. So <laughs> she's pretty happy about that. Uh, I took out the weed whipper thingy and made it all the way around to up where the cows are <laughs> before the batteries went dead. There was a lot of stuff to cut. I want to get this bottom wire powered before I move them into this area since this one doesn't have any of the cattle panels or anything. It's never going to get finished until it gets started. <laughs> Thought I'd come out here for a little bit and cut some wood. Well, that's one tank. That's good for today. Especially when it's 80 degrees outside and I haven't used these muscles in a while. Got to start into a pile like this kind of slow. Good morning, everybody. 
I already brought her in and milked her this morning. She was kind of a creep. She <laughs> she's definitely has her own personality. She wouldn't eat her corn. She only let go maybe, I don't know, half a gallon of milk. But um, anyway, I did that maybe an hour, hour and a half ago. I have to get an onion for Melissa because I'm going to do chicken on the barbecue today or on the grill and I'm going she's gonna make potato salad and then I'm gonna get her I'm gonna grab the other water tank and put that in the other pasture and I'm gonna get her in there and try to get some grain so he has a chance to eat some grain that one should do it I will eventually show when I'm milking, once I get it all figured out. <laughs> right now we're trying different things. I definitely have to build a stanchion for her to get into and uh, just a, a few things we need to do. He's real shy, but hopefully he'll find that. We want dandelion greens. Yeah, they like those. All my stuff is ready. This is all ready too. I mean, it's all over temp, except for there was one leg in there that was like two degrees to go.
Oh, Saturday afternoon right now. Uh, lunch was awesome. Tomorrow, Melissa's making some really big old pork chops. I went up and she said get eight pork chops at B and B Meat Market, which I did. She goes, they're two ninety nine a pound on sale, bone in. But she didn't realize that they're cut like an inch thick. They're really big. But anyway, she's cooking those up tomorrow with mashed potatoes. But we got a lot of chicken for this week already. Anyway, I'm running up to L and M right now. This morning when I milked. Mesa, Mesa, whatever it is, the cow, she was really finicky and would not touch the grain. And the other times, you know, you put in three and a half scoops of, and I've just been putting in cracked corn. Because when I asked the people when I was there, the, the, the mom and the dad and the daughter, and the daughter usually runs everything. She's the one that Melissa talks to, but I was just talking. And anyway, I asked what do you feed them, just corn. Just, and I said, just like cracked corn? He goes, yep, that's all they need. Well, she wouldn't touch it this morning at all. So Melissa messaged she goes, no, never once has she not ate every single morsel of grain in the bucket. So then I, I told her, Melissa, you know, message her and tell her what we've been feeding. And she goes, well, when we feed them, it has some molasses in it. And looks like I gotta fly in here, I gotta get out. That changes everything. I mean, that's like taking away the cookies. So I'm gonna run up right now and either get a sweet feed or if they have dry molasses, I can mix in. Uh, just so that, you know, the more, like the more grain they get and the better they're fed, the more milk they're gonna give. She's just unhappy. I have so much stuff that has to get done this week. Saturday usually is a day when I hang out with Melissa a lot, so I don't get a whole lot of stuff done. I gotta build a stanchion for the cow. Um, I, today is Saturday, Thursday morning, I will milk the cow, and then I head up to duck camp, and I won't be back until Sunday at lunch. And I wanna do a video on that for Jones Act Survival, so I want this one, hopefully I can get this one done and edited and put up for, I don't know if you guys are watching this on Thursday or when you're watching it, but uh, that's what my goal is build the stanchion. I gotta get all my stuff ready so that I can pack it. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff to do. I wouldn't seem so far behind, but I mean, I pretty much lost. I mean, I got stuff done, but I lost three weeks with COVID. Yesterday, I definitely overdid it. First, I did all that trimming. I had a bunch of other little stuff I did, and then going out and cutting that wood when it was that hot. Uh, I thought I felt better than I did, and I was still kind of weak, so uh, overdid it a little bit. I did not get what I wanted. I got some grower finisher. Uh, stuff for cows that has molasses products in it. I must get sweet feed at uh, Tractor supply me. I, they, they didn't know they're waxing the floors tonight So it's most of all the grain area <laughs> was completely gone. He said it was in the back some back room and uh, Yeah, nobody looked at all that happy in there <laughs> but I was gonna get a small game license too and my federal duck stamps and everything and a state stamp, but nobody was at that desk. They were just busy getting ready for getting everything waxed. Well, it's the afternoon of the next day and last night I went and got that that feed that had the molasses in it, and it was so funny because I uh, came in here and I, when I milked the cow, like in the morning or in the night, whatever, I once we get her out, then I put the feed into the bin, the feeder thingy, for the next day, so I don't have to do it in the morning or night. And uh, I was putting the molasses stuff in there. And what it looks like is this.
So it's just like pellets with some corn and some oats or something in there, and it smells, it's really sweet, smell, like molasses, you know? And uh, so I'm putting this in there, door is shut and everything, and Mesa is at the back door with her head. I'll have to see um, if I can get, put a clip of that video in, because Alyssa took the video, I think. And she is mooing to, to get in. So that was definitely what she was missing. So when we, she came right in and uh, we milked her out. She didn't pee or poop in here, nothing. Stood still, milked, ate the whole time. But she didn't eat all of it. And I put quite a bit in there. And so then Melissa got a hold of the people that had it before. And the lady said, you put in two scoops of corn and then one and a half scoops of, of the molasses stuff. So that's what we did this morning. And again, she came right in. In fact, she came in and I didn't even put the, I usually I click the lead on her and pull her in. We didn't, we just left the door open. But since it's a new area for her, she didn't come in here. She starts walking that way to go through those doors. <laughs> so Melissa runs around and shuts the door. And she shoved her nose in the, I have a, a two foot piece of, of stove pipe, class A, and there's a bucket there that I use to mix concrete. She's sticking her nose in there, like, had to turn her around and bring her in here. And then she just right away started eating away and milked out real nice again. So this morning after milking, I just stayed out here and I'm just getting this cleaned up. I need to have it blocked off so she can't go that way, but I needed to get some things organized. It was driving me crazy and in this winter, if I want to work in here, I needed to get stuff out of the area that needs to be worked on, so I brought stuff and put it over here now. So, um, and then I just went in a little bit ago. Well, now it's about almost 2 o'clock because my dad called and I talked to him for probably 40 minutes on the phone. But Melissa made pork chops and mashed potatoes and peas today. It was really good. And like I said, I'm just doing some stuff here. I wanna, I'm gonna build a stanchion area. I might get to it in just a couple minutes, you know, just a little bit here. Um, but I had to move stuff around. We wanted to move the milker in there so that, because otherwise the, the thing is stretched when it's outside, I have to move it around to the door and bring it in. Put it in there. I'm gonna take that table and take it out of there because we don't use it. The cow blocks all that off. So I'm gonna move that over here to use as kind of a blocking Thing. And then right here, I'm just going to put a string that clicks, or a thingy that clicks here so she can't come this way. And she'll walk in. I'm still debating if I want to get rid of this stud right now. Um, I don't know how it's going to go taking her out of the stanchion. All I'm going to do, we're not going to build it up in the air at all. Uh, I'm just going to go 33 inches wide and get a couple 2x6s here. There's no reason to lift it up in the air because she is tall enough, so it doesn't matter. I just put them on. And they just sit there. I'm going to take this out. And I know I can get her in here, get the feed thing right there. Everything's easy. The uh, thing is getting her back out again. Am I going to have to hinge the side so that she can walk out to get out? Or will she back up easy enough? And I need to figure that out on tonight's milking. So that's what I've been doing. But then I came out here to start doing this. And it was like, I've got to get some of this cleaned up. This is driving me nuts and just get some things organized. So that's all I've been doing today. Yeah, talking to my dad since we're gonna be going duck hunting here in, well, today's Sunday. Both of us are going up on Thursday. So yeah, we were talking about that, and Zachary, he will be up there too. Sarah, I think, is going up. Chris and Trista will be up, Johan, I suppose his son. But Zachary and uh, Samantha and Rose, they flew to Florida today, and they're taking Rose to uh, Disney World. So I think he's up there and then gets back. And like one or one day or 
two days later, then he has to go up to duck camp. So I'm sure he won't get there Thursday. He'll come up. Usually he comes up Friday. Look who's here waiting to get milked and get her grain. <laughs> you still have another hour and a half to wait. I'm not ready for you yet. <laughs> they learn fast. By setting her up in here, if this works, when she has her calf and we milk her, we need to bring her calf in here too. So the calf can kind of hang out over here while we milk mom, and hopefully we're thinking all this through. <laughs> then once again, I'm screwing it together here, except for that bottom part, so I can move stuff around if I need to. Well, I just have one more thing I'm going to do tonight because it's it's time to milk her. I wanted to get this done. I'm going to do where you bolt it here and then and put her neck in and then boom. And I'm going to be actually in one stationary. Her head goes in and then the one on this side I go in and I just pop a bolt through to hold it. But I don't know how wide her neck is. First I have to see the, if the length is okay. I could have made this smaller, but the plans that I looked at, this is the size they usually do so they can put a big round tub in there because we, we won't use this the whole time. And I don't know if this is too tall now, for how her head will go in there, but I'm going to take the chain that I have leg bolted. I got a five inch leg bolt that holds that chain, and I've got a stud right here, so I'm going to put it over here so I can clip her. And then we can see how I mean, she milks real easy. You know, it's not like we're branding a bull or something, you know, it just, just has to hold her. And uh, this will be safer because, like Melissa says, when she's out here, you know, you've got a 1,000 or 1,200 pound cow and it starts swinging that way and the walls there, it can get a little intimidating. So, like I said, it's time to milk her, so I'll get that moved over here and we'll see how it goes tonight and from there I can make some adjustments.
Yeah, I think you need a little bit lower of a feed bin because her neck hits it going in because she's not as high now. Oh. What are you doing? See what I mean? Yeah. Oh, she could step one step forward though. been milk in about eight minutes and now you can see how the milk slows down but if you pull on it you get that last bit she only has three that work so the, that fourth one is plugged and bent over and this one the back one here doesn't give as much either So first we run hot water through, uh, we bought four gallons is what we've been doing. Then we do cold water with a little bit of vinegar in there. And there is an acid wash that you want to do about once a week. Let that sit for five minutes or so, and then we rinse it again with cold water, and then it's done. I like to leave a little bit warm in here though, so we get this cap. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to have to keep them short this week because I'm going to be going duck hunting and you'll get this like a week out of date. So, yeah, the only thing I should have done differently, well, if I'm going to use that thing to feed them every time is if it would have been six inches lower. But I'm not planning on feeding in that all the time. So I'll just get one that's a little bit lower so that her neck can get in there easier. And then... She did not back out of here easy at all. I had to push with all my might. And then at one point, she put her head in here and tried to go through here. And so she'll have to get the hang of it. I've seen other videos where people bring their cows in and unlatch them and they back right up. And then she tried to go around this corner. So what I'm going to do, though, is take this stud right here out so that once she gets out partway, she can spin around. She tried to spin, but she's so long that her head kind of came in through here. So I had to get on the front of her and just with my shoulder push her back enough to get her head to clear. 
which she'll get the hang of that, but I am going to remove this stud. There's just no reason for it to be there right now. And again today now, it took about 30 minutes to get her in here, get her milked, get everything sanitized, and then we dump the milk into jars after we strain it, and then get it out into the refrigerator that's in the guest house. And you can see each jar is a half gallon. I've already drank almost about three quarters of a gallon of it myself. Melissa came out here and not from today's stuff, but the other couple days she skimmed all of the cream off of it and that gave her a half a gallon of cream that she's gonna make butter at out of, but now she has been processing plums all afternoon. Even this morning she was doing that, then had to pull it off so she could fry the pork chops. And she's still working on that. She has to run it through a strainer yet, and then she has a lot of it too, and then she has to can it still tonight. Uh, she's gonna be busy until 10 o'clock. After duck hunting, I will sit down and do a question and answer video because I've got a lot of questions that come up and oh, people think you're tied to the farm forever if you've got the milk cow and you just don't understand yet how we're planning on doing things. They said the same thing about the boiler but it didn't really change my life at all except for I got to go fill the boiler in the morning and at night. I haven't started packing anything yet so I better get busy. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next video. Festus, I know you like it.